This is Pat Walker, Mission Winners. It's Monday. We're doing a training coaching video here for everybody. Was an IBD Meetup co-leader for 12 plus years. Loved teaching, taught on university level, which was a lot of fun years ago, and uh, advanced classes. Loved teaching, and the reason why is because it helps people. It helps speed up the learning curve. And this video is for you. A lot of people, you know, you get frustrated. I remember going, good Lord, what am I doing here? I can't figure this out. And there were other words interjected with that, but we're going to leave that alone right now. It's like, what do I do? What do I do? Looking at charts, trying to, I don't understand any of this. Folks, by the way, this was before the internet. All right. So I'm going back a long time ago, but I have to tell you, it was after the invention of paper. So I could look at chart books. So just want to lay that out there too. We weren't looking at stone tablets or anything like that. But right now we're looking at a chart on Microsoft. And there's a lesson here and there's a moral here. I have to share this with you. Here's the lesson or the moral. Don't look just at daily charts. Look at weekly charts. Look at hourly charts. Do I look at five minute charts? No, I don't. I hardly ever look at 10 minute charts. A longer base breakout on a weekly and daily chart normally leads to a much bigger move that you can let the stock work for you instead of your fingers and your eyes. Let the chart work for you. Let the stock trend for you. I'll give you an example here though. We're going to do two lessons with this. This is Microsoft. This is current. This is Monday. Monday 5-4, May 4th. And it's going sideways. Now let's look at the chart. It went up on okay volume, but then it fell on pretty heavy volume. See that bar there? This is a daily chart. And then it rallied back up and had pretty decent volume there last week. Look at that. In fact, it basically took out the highs of this bar, backed off a little bit, pulled back on less volume. And this is Monday, as I stated. Volume's relatively low. You can see a shelf. You can say, well, okay, I can kind of see that. I guess if it takes out these tops on good volume, that would be good. That would be good. There's a great tactic I want to share with you. And Bill O'Neill's mentioned this. It's years ago, somebody said, if you could only look at one chart time frame, what would it be? And you know what he said? Weekly. Weekly. So here's the daily. And this, oh, I guess I can kind of see these tops here. Take it to the weekly. Now look at it. You've got a V-shaped cup. Look at the volume. Fell on heavy volume. But now look at this bar. Up on a pickup in volume. You can say, oh, Pat. That's a red bar. That's a bad bar. Take a close look at that chart. I'm going to do something for you. I'll make this bigger. Look at this bar. It's a down bar, but note it opened here. So it gapped down versus the previous week, and then it fell, and it, it found support right here on the 8-week or 10-week moving average line. And then it bounced off, and it closed in the top third of its weekly range. Volume was low, but it found support on that bar, on that line. That's constructive. So go back to the daily and you'd say, that's kind of frittering around here, you know, it went up on decent volume, went up on decent volume. Look at these bars. See that? How's the volume on this bar right here? This volume bar versus these. Pretty good. How's the volume on this bar versus these? Pretty good. Green bars went up, closed near the highs on this bar on the daily, closed near the highs on this bar on the daily, pulled back on less volume on the daily, and then today, quiet and constructive on the 8 EMA. Now let's take it back to the weekly. And this is why we look at the weekly. Last week, this actually, it's a green bar. It closed up versus the previous week's close. That's the close right there. It closed up on a pickup in volume. In a kind of a rough week, this stock held in there. It closed up last week. Maybe not much, but it closed up on a pickup in volume. And you can see these relatively clean tops right here. Going across there. Right across here. So what will we be looking for? Take out the highs of this bar on the weekly or the daily. And definitely this. And if it does, this has a potential to move. It's in the Dow. Now, let's always frame up the action of the stock versus the indices. All right? 
This is the Dow, on, I mean, excuse me, this is Microsoft on the weekly. Here's QLD on the weekly. Okay, let's see. Oh, that looks pretty, that's pretty far off the highs, isn't it? Yeah, QL, NASDAQ 100. Okay, let's go back here. And uh, gosh, that, that's not so great. Gosh, how's Microsoft? Oh, that's not so bad. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, let me go back here. Let's look at QLD. Yeah, that's pretty far off the highs. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that's, that's you know, it's off the highs here. Let me go back and look at Microsoft. Oh, that's not that far off the highs. Let's look at the spiders. Oh, that's, geez, that's way off the highs. Okay, that, yeah, that's not so great. Let me, let me go back and look at Microsoft now. Oh, that's closer to the highs. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's why we look at daily and weekly. If we're really pragmatic, you could ask yourself this question. Do you want to buy stocks that are hitting new highs? New highs. The answer should be yes, I hope, okay? I mean, no, I want to buy stocks that are hitting lows. That's really what I'm looking for. No, of course not. You're looking for stocks that are exhibiting strength. If you want to buy stocks that will hit new highs, that have greater potential of hitting new highs, isn't it better to look for stocks that are near new highs? Sure. Check this out, folks. I'll go back and do this one for you. Microsoft. Look at right here. See the buy spot right there? Look at that nice shelf. See that? In fact, I'll do this for you. Again, I love teaching this stuff. I'm like a kid with a new toy. Check this out. It's like, well, well yeah, I can see. That's just kind of a downward slope and trend line there. I guess if it takes out around 152 a share with volume, that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, look, oh, look at that. Oh, the volume picked up. You can say, oh, that's a bad red bar, Pat. Folks, look at where it closed on that bar. Closed right near the highs. They didn't sell on this bar. They bought it. Now, this is a heavier volume bar, too. Closed right just below the bottom half. Found support right here on the 20-day. So, oh, it's a down and sloping trend line, isn't it? Oh, volume pickup. That's not too bad. I guess if it goes through there, that wouldn't be a bad buy. You know, if volume's good. Oh, gee whiz. It did it. Surprise, surprise. Look at that. Gomer Pyle would be proud. Look at that move. Look at the volume pickup. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. And they voted. And they voted. And they voted. And they voted. We owned that. We owned this. Now this is the daily. Remember that date. 12-12-19. December 12th. Now, this is the daily. Take it to the weekly. Nice little shelf right here. Nice little two-day tops. Look on the weekly chart where this thing closed. Look at that. It closed right near the highs on a pickup in volume. There's power there. That's the things we look for. So now we see it here on the weekly. This is current. This is current right here. This is where we bought it last for a great trend, going sideways. Does this have potential to take out these tops? Well, of course it does. Of course it does. It's a big NASDAQ stock. It's a big Dow stock. The chart pattern's good. And again, you look at this chart, and now I'm going to punch up the, I don't look at the Dow, that's 30 stocks. Let's look at the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500, the spiders. There's the spiders, the S&P 500. And here's Microsoft, which looks better. Microsoft, spiders. Well, I'd have to say Microsoft looks better. There's strength there. Now, am I saying it's going to break out? I don't know the future, and I don't forecast. By the way, people that forecast, it's an ego thing. When we accept this, this is a psychological foundation, all right? When we accept the fact that we don't know the future, we can see the present far more clearly and it will help us operate going forward as the stock does progress into the future. 
Just remember that. By the way, that ain't hocus pocus stuff, okay? That isn't, I have a degree in psychology also and I utilize it. Charts are a reflection of human emotions, fear, gr greed, panic, complacency. We look for these things in the charts and once complacency sets in and it gets quiet with volume and price action tightening up, that normally can lead to a breakout. And how is that good breakout going to be measured? Remember, I used an operative word there. Good! How is a good breakout going to be measured? By price action backed by volume. Get that volume in there. That's what you want. If you do these things, you will dramatically improve your investing results and let price guide you. I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. Let price guide you. Just get in line with it and ride it for as long as you can. And how long is that? Um, I don't know the future, do you? Anybody who says they do is a liar. We don't need to. Just live in the now and look at it bar by bar. I also will share this with you. I don't look at five minute charts. I rarely look at 10 minute charts. I'm looking for volume clues on the 30 minute and hourly when it pushes through a pivot and it makes it easier for us. That's it. Simplicity. I can't stress it enough. No high anxiety, no angst. And the last thing I'll say, will you be wrong? Yes. Will I be wrong? Yes. You know the only person who never has a loss? You know what his name is or her name is? It's called liar. We will have losses. But if we have a really precise entry, we also have an extremely precise exit for a much smaller loss. That's very important. Bill O'Neill, off the record, he doesn't want 7 8% losses. He wants less than that. That's a fact. All right? Well, you know, he's not doing much now, but when he did, keep your losses small. It's good above a line. It's bad below. Don't look at the five-minute charts. It will make your life easier. Anyway, I wanted to share this. This is for everybody. This is for everybody. Training, coaching. I've been doing this since 1985, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I love the challenge of finding the next super stock. I'll do one more real quick, down and dirty for you. Right here. Tesla, daily. And you say, I don't see anything there. Well, there was. Nice shelf. Nice tight shelf. Look at the volume pickup. Bouncing off the 20 days. See the volume pickup? Versus all these bars? Advance it a day. Oh, it starts to pick up on a pickup in volume. You buy it. And it goes. And it goes. And it goes. And it goes. That's good money right there, folks. That's 600 points. Do they all do this? No. But if you have the time and the desire and the passion, go on your system and put Tesla in there and watch this stock from the first week in December all the way through into mid-February. And I have a simple question for you. You tell me, did this stock close below the eight period exponential moving average in that entire move? Eight EMA. You tell me. And what I just gave you is a million dollar education if you know how to use it. It's simple. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Love teaching, love helping. It's why we're here. Admission winners, take care, have a good day, be safe, and just again, invest in what you see. Just react to it. Also, last point, focus on leading stocks. Leading stocks and leading groups, max list stocks also, and you'll dramatically improve your results. And we quantify that statement as far as what to look for. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like. Maybe hit that subscribe button. We come up with new content nearly every day. Also, check out the videos on the right. YouTube recommends the one on the top, and the bottom one is something we thought you might enjoy. See you next time.